And we're back with John from Wheel and Remodeling. Johnny, how's it going today? It's going good. Hey, quick video on uh, the, this is really going to be just on the extension wings that I made for my Capex miter saw. Um, I decided to make my own out of plywood just so that I could really get the benefits of each different commercially available setup and incorporate them into my own and really have them uh, fit the space in my trailer that I had and, and do what I needed to do. Uh, everything is, is a lot of half inch birch wire. This area here where I had to cut in the, uh, the T-tracks, I doubled it up a little bit and had it a little more secure in the, uh, right here, the, the connection point to, to the saw. Um, we'll get over a little detail. I mean, there's details everywhere. We'll do those independently. Um, start out, I guess, with a couple of flip stops so I can have repeatable cuts. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not actually concerned with any fence beyond this. Um, actually, I set these just back past this fence so that they don't interfere. Uh, so these flip stops are just to create repeatable cuts. Hold on a second, I'm going to use wood. You know, I want to cut 10 of these. Okay. Now I can drop the saw down, shrink my flip stop right into it. And now, every time I set that piece up against the stop, it's going to be at the same distance. I flip it out away, now I can send right past it. There's one of those on both sides. Um, the T traps also have a lot of flexibility. This little mini sustainer keeps some of the tools that I use for the, the KPEX in it. Um, I've got this Craig auto clamp that I, that I have a bolt in the bottom. This bolt fits into the T trap. So from the end here, you can see it slides in. You can put any material underneath it, clamp down. Now you have another way to clamp at any point on the, on the extension itself. Uh, while we're in here, I go over these couple of little lights that like book lights. Uh, what I did is I fabricated up a little metal clip. I'll show you these later in the video. These lights just stick right in there. Little on and off switch. And now when it's dark grow, they don't throw up a lot of light, but it's enough just to kind of illuminate that one for each side. Um, and you can just direct them right in exactly where you're cutting. It's enough, but it's a dark night or something, it gets you that little bit of light you might need to keep working. Um, let's see. The T tracks run across the whole way and also uh, perpendicular right here or parallel to the cut right here. That's for crown stops and also another place to have like, like these festival clamps. These will slide right in. And, that, and now you can clamp anything. That's what I use for, uh, well, actually, my crown jig. I, it is, uh, it's got some bolts that work itself. Uh, just another way to clamp. Let's take a look, I guess, now at, at these couple of jigs. So, this is the MFT 800. It's the older Festival version. The new one they sell now is called the Festival Capex, I think. And it's, it's just a little shorter, similar size. This was the smaller of their MFT tables back in the day. I made a little shelf here that just kind of works over the legs, so it doesn't go anywhere. Got a couple of notches cut out. You can see that right here. Got one of those on each side. Locked in place, good pitch. The legs a little more sturdy. Um, and it also gives me a place for tools, equipment, tape measures, pencils, different saws, coping saws, things like that. So they're up off the ground. And it gives me a place to store a couple of my jigs. So I've got a uh, crown molding cutting jig right here, and also a jig for small parts. Uh, when you're cutting little detail moldings and everything, they tend to either snap the piece way back or crack or, or something like that. This gives like an auxiliary zero clearance fence at the back of the cut. Uh, what I did was I made both of these jigs short enough and designed this tray actually. The jigs fit right down in there. So let's actually grab these now. I'm going to jump, jump back up and we'll take a look at how those two jigs work. Okay, this, like I said, is my crown molding jig. A lot of guys just take a, a straight board, really. You use a couple of these clamps and clamp the board straight across. I got a little fancier with it. Uh, so this is what I do. I get these few just bolts with a little uh, kind of knob on the top. 
these will slide right into the, the T-tracks. Once they're aligned, right? Um, this prevents me from needing to use clamps on it. Um, pretty few small pieces of crown, that's what we were using today. So what you would do, what this does is it allows you to make a repeatable cut. You'd actually calculate or figure out the distance of that crown, the projection on the ceiling. And since you're cutting crown upside down, then you come and measure off the fence to the face of this, bring it right up tight, you know, right wherever those marks are, you'd be a little more precise, and you screw it down. Now, when you're coming in to cut a piece of crown, you simply drop that in, and when it falls, everything's at a repeatable angle every time you cut it. Now to cut um, for copes and everything, you just swing your saw to your 45s or whatever angle, or if you're cutting miters, and the jig holds it and secure. You'll see a couple little notches here and there. That is, like over here, that's just so that there was enough clearance for me to get my thumb on the lock button and on the handle and bring it out. Uh, and also these holes here allow me just to look down through and see which angle I'm at. All the angles, all the other angles in the front here, you can just see as this is there. Swap over quick to the small parts jig. Uh, when we come back, we'll talk about that. Okay. All right, got the small parts jig attached. Um, it, it attaches in the same method as the crown jig, so I didn't, uh, I didn't do that on camera. Just screws in, tightens down. Um, you can see with these wings, the wings, the way they're designed with the V notch that sits into the capex, everything registers in the exact same spot every time. So these wing nuts go into the exact same slots, everything lines up. You know, that really sets my center cut point to the same point every time. Um, and you're good. When, when I use this jig, I tend to sometimes I get lock the saw in this taw mode, taw mode. And what that prevents me from doing is cutting through the whole jig. At this point, when the saw is down, the back edge of the blade there doesn't go much past um, this edge. So I don't cut my jig in half. There's a few times I forgot, and that's why it's in as bad a shape as it is. And, Probably needs a little rebuild. It's seen better days, especially over here. We got a little, a little damage, but we'll fix that up eventually. Um, everywhere you can see a cut is really an angle that I've cut at some point on the saw. Same notches here to give clearance for the, the hand. Same holes here to see down exactly what angle I'm at. I made a couple of quick marks at some of the detents on the saw, 30, 22, 15, so that I know when it clicks in there. You know, just easily I know that's 15, that's 22 and a half, and I don't have to guess, you know, oh, is that 15 or 22 and a half? I, I just made a little marks on the top of this one there. Um, that's the small part too. Again, the, the reason is a couple of things. If you're actually cutting a trough in a piece, you need the piece to be set forward uh, two or three quarters inch, I think, on the capex, as if you're just trenching and you're not cutting all the way through. So this, it does that if I'm doing a trench cut. It gives me that distance, and it also allows me to cut real small moldings, little rope moldings and quarter, quarter round and stuff without cracking them. Um, because on the regular saw, you know, there's at least um, a few inches of unsupported material where the blade passes through the back. Now, uh, I'm going to get a little nitty gritty, some underneath shots, see some of the details, how it was put together. Uh, and just this. All right, we're back. Uh, taking a quick look at the bracket that attaches everything to the saw. This bracket was stolen. Uh, well, it's not stolen. It's just this is the parts. Uh, there's Festool spare parts from the UG wings that Festool sells. I just ordered a couple of their their uh, you know parts off their ECAT uh, online ordering system and put it all together. I did have to because of the thickness. I made this section here. Um, I did need to route it out a little bit. You can see. That's the dimension there that I had to route, route in, kind of mortise in a little bit in order to get the top surface to sit flush. Um, this bracket here just slides forward and back and clamps down onto that rib on the bottom uh, with that knob. So that's how they attach. These are the metal brackets that I made that accept the lights. Uh, those are Definitely specific to the type of light I bought uh, and had to be kind of custom bent and stuff 
but uh, that's how the lights attach. All right, because we're not always set up on a nice shop floor that's even and level, um, sometimes in a driveway, sometimes we're out in the yard. These legs have a little bit of adjustability built into them. I accomplished that by, these are the bolts that come through here are fixed to this piece here, and then I routed this slot through the second leg. So if you actually loosen both of these, you see you can raise the leg up or lower it down. This marker that I have here, that just tells us um, if the floor was perfectly level, that is the position this leg should be. So in a garage, we tend to set it right there. If we're outside, we don't either have to come up or down in order to make the whole surface, the two wings in the, in the saw top, completely flat. All right, another big benefit to this, I work out of a trailer, an enclosed work trailer. Um, all my job is, all my jobs are on site, on a customer's house and stuff. Um, so I need to be able to be portable and I need things to take up as little space as possible in my trailer. Um, so I designed these to break down, fold up, and actually strap together and carry with one hand to take up less space in the trailer and also to be easier and faster for setup. Um, I've already loosened up that bracket we saw in the beginning, so the wing just comes off. Um, if you come in quick here, you can see a little more of that bracket just quickly. What it does is see how it's got this this triangular section here, that registers into this slot here on the capex. Um, and then this, this piece slides forward and tightens down. That's what pinches the two together. That's how you get the consistent uh, registration of the wing on the saw every time. So this is the piece. You've got a piano hinge under here, a section of it. And this is just like a lid support latch. Uh, so pop this down. The wing, this leg folds up. You'll see here, this is actually just a rare earth magnet that I've got drilled in there, which corresponds to one of the bolts that help adjust the leg. This comes down and sticks relatively well. You know, you can turn it over, it doesn't go anywhere. Um, take this one here, I'm going to come over, pop this one off quick. Now, by, you know, you see the brackets on this end of that one. And on this side, the brackets over here. So we put these opposing each other. And the way I kind of round them and, and notch them and stuff, you see there's a notch that runs through here that corresponds to the fatter section on that one. These two pieces link right together. And then these velcro straps that you swing around, feed through, back on themselves. Over here. You do it, feed it around, through there, back onto itself. Now you can see everything's latched together, they're secure. I've got a little handle right here. Now the whole wing assembly is one piece. I can carry this and I can carry the MFT table in my other hand, walk to the job site. I've got half of my setup in one trip. Go back to the, the trailer, grab the Capex, and there's my second trip. The whole thing sets up in just two trips. Super versatile, compact. This goes in the trailer and stores like this. Vertical, takes up really no room at all. That's my setup. Works excellent for me. Uh, hopefully you guys can either take some ideas from it, utilize some of the ways that I do things, you know, change things to make them work for yourself. But hopefully you got a little something out of this. Enjoy guys.